Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman. In this video, we're going to go over Aromatic Systems Part 2. Now, here's the thing. In the chapter of Aromatic Systems, this whole thing is about the reactions that they go through. But the cool thing is that there's really not many mechanisms. There's one major mechanism, which we're going to talk about now. It's called the Electrophilic Aromatic Substitution Reaction. And then all you have to do is plug in the different reactions into this mechanism. So that's the great thing about this chapter. There's one mechanism. And honestly, it's very unlikely that they're going to ask you much about the mechanism specifically or directly. But what's going to happen is after we learn about our reactions, then we're going to go into what's the most useful part about this chapter. And that is we're going to learn on the strategies of organization, of like order of events. We're going to learn about how to figure out from a benzene what sequence of events that we should go through in order to make the product that they want us to make. That's really where the, the, the meat and potatoes come in for this chapter. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to start with the basics. We're going to learn things, and I just want you to kind of get the big picture, and you're good, especially for this section. And then through the next few videos, we're going to build up to the, to, the, to the grand finale here, and that is how to do synthesis, how to do aromatic synthesis. Okay, so bear with me. That's a quick introduction about what we're going to do. And now let's go over the general mechanism, all right? Now, again, keep in mind, like I just said, this mechanism covers almost every reaction that you're going to learn about in this chapter. So what this is called is, it's called the EAS mechanism, the Electrophilic Aromatic Substitution Mechanism. Now what that means is that benzene is an electrophile. Think about it. Benzene is rich in electrons. So it, it, what it wants to find is, or it, it, what's attracted to it, I should say, is something that wants electrons, an electrophile, right? So benzene is going to draw its electrons in to something that's positive. Now, when you do this, what happens is we take the double bond and we pull in that positive because of the rich electrons around benzene. And unfortunately, something happens as an intermediate, and that is we break the aromaticity. So by having E, let's say, add here, then this double bond right here, it just transferred to this position, leaving us with a carbocation down below, right there, right? So here's our carbocation uh, right there. So we went from aromatic to not aromatic anymore, right? Now this is only a partial electron flow. Well, this is why it's substitution, because what that means is that wherever, and remember this, because no matter how complicated the benzene is, this rule is always the same. Wherever something comes in, in this case, we had the E come into that red carbon right there. That is the exact same atom that's going to have to lose something, nowhere else. So if you put the E on that carbon that's red, then we're going to remove something from that position. And that's why it's called substitution. Well, what can we remove? Well, in our case, we have H there, so we're going to remove an H. But you could have removed something else if something else was there, right? So whatever's on this red carbon is going to be removed after the E comes into it. Something positive comes into it. And that's what we're going to do now. So watch this. We're going to go here. Actually, I drew it in the wrong place. Let me like that. Okay, we're going to use a base. It doesn't matter. I'll write A minus because we don't really care what this base is. It doesn't matter. We're going to pull off that H and we're going to reform benzene. And there you have it. It's back to benzene. So you see that the electrons here go after the positive carbon and you get back to benzene. So this is the mechanism. And this is always what happens. And I want you to recognize, like I said, no matter what this may look like as a carbocation intermediate, you always pull from the atom that has the first group that came in. You say, well, why is that so important? Um, let me show you why. Um, imagine if we have, let's say, what I just showed you here. This is E and this is positive. Think about the resonance. I can draw it out in a different way. I can have, let's say, this double bond over here on the right. I, it can just go like that. And now, 
we're drawing the intermediate looks like this. See that? And now this is positive right here. See how I did that from resonance? So now you can see why, by the way, resonance is so important to review before you learn about aromatics for this particular reason. There's a lot of resonance in this chapter. So all I did now is I moved this one over here, and now the positive is up above. These are three different intermediates. They come from the same exact starting point. So when this breaks, this benzene breaks, and E comes into it, you could draw it any of these three ways. They're all the same. Remember that? Resonance, they're all the same drawing. So what if I give you the if I gave you this intermediate and I said what's going to happen when a minus comes in? You're going to say, well, hold on a second. Let me erase this so I can clear that up. Now you're going to say to yourself, well, wait, a minus. Where's it going to go? There's a positive here. See, if the positive is here, it's very easy to know what happens. But if I give you this intermediate, if you know the mechanism that is a substitution, then you're assuming e came in here, right? That's where E comes in. So that's always where you pull the H from. So there's an H right there. And you say, well, how can I do that if the positive is so far away? What you do is you pull the H, and you make it chase after a double bond, and then the double bond chase after the positive. You see that? So you always want to make sure, even if they don't give you an intermediate that's easily identifiable for the mechanism. See, here it's easy. If I pull off this H, then I could just make the... Uh, bond chase after the positive and you, uh, you're done right here like that right so that's easy but the middle one's a little bit harder to see this one's easy to do if I have a base and I have an H of course I have to pull it off from the place where I got the E so I pull it from here and this chases the positive it's right above so it's easy to do that okay so do you notice how sometimes like the middle example it might not be clear how to do the drawing to close it back up to benzene but now you see the point just remember that in all these cases, whenever you do an aromatic substitution, wherever the group comes into benzene, that's the same atom that got that new group that's going to lose something. That's what substitution means. You're swapping pieces out. Okay? That's it. That's what this is all about. Now, the other thing before we wrap this video, I want to reference really quickly what ortho, meta, and para mean. Okay? So, meta and para because we're going to see this often so I just want to make sure you know that now let's say you have a, a, re a reference of something let's say we have Z right here and this is benzene well what I could do is I can say that the 1 2 position is the ortho position so ortho is the 1 2 position okay that 1 2 so if I put a Y group here that's ortho meta is the 1 3 position so if I have let's say a Z and then I add something in here let's say Y then that's meta that's the M position there's two meta positions right there's one over here on the left and there's one down here there's two orthos there's one down here and there's one right up here there's two one two positions and there's two one three positions para there's only one so for para it's right across so if the Z is here then Y is there. That's para. That's the P position. It's the 1, 4 position. Okay? Remember that. Now, these are references typically with two groups, but we use it loosely. So even if we had a more complicated system, a benzene system with a whole bunch of branching, we could say, oh, it's ortho to this one or para to that one. Even though it's not really used for that purpose, we tend to do that frequently. Okay, but what it's really used for is when you have two substituents off of benzene. If it's 1, 2, it's ortho. 1, 3, it's meta. 1, 4, it's para. Okay, that's what it's all about. All right, so that wraps up this video. The, actually, the last thing I'll do is I was going to tell you um, one other way to illustrate the aromatic reaction is to say that we start with this electron. Remember the circle like that? We start with the benzene like that. We have E plus come into it, so we draw it like this where it came in here and now what we do is we draw a half circle and we say it's positive that means that the electrons are flowing and there's a positive because of resonance right remember how I showed you over here there were three resonance forms so sometimes this is positive that's positive and that's positive so the way to illustrate that more generically is to see it this way so you might see that and then finally after you have a base then it goes back to aromatic again so we draw it as a circle See that? And so this is the energy diagram. You start here, you become something very high in energy because you went from aromatic to non-aromatic 
back to aromatic, right? So you're going to go high in energy. This is aromatic. This is non-aromatic. <music>